Hey, what's up guys? Um, welcome back. Um, today we're going to be doing something really cool and I'm going to finish up the uh, graphics tutorials uh, in this tutorial and I think you're going to really like this one because we're going to do something pretty fun. Um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to make a program that when run generates a ton of randomly sized circles, random, randomly sized colors, and in random locations. So a lot of randomization. Um, and so when this is made, um, it'll just make this cool little abstract art type of thing, and I think you're really going to enjoy it. And it's not too long, and it's pretty easy. So let's get started. Your first thing we're going to do is import. So we're going to import java.awt.color, and then import java.awt.graphics, and then import java x dot swing dot j frame okay and then we have now that we have all that imported let's get started what we're going to do first is we're going to make an integer and this integer will be called int draw amount and we're going to set that equal to zero and this draw amount will be the amount of times uh, the amount of circles that will be drawn so at the beginning of the program it will be set to zero because we want to draw well, of course, more than zero, uh, and you'll understand very soon. And then we're going to create a, um, what's it called? Well, a method, um, and so let's create that. We're going to type public main, and there we go. And now that we have public main created, we are going to create another method, and that will be the starting method. And you guys should probably know how to make that. It is public static void main string args brackets and bracket and in here we're going to type new main because um, I actually need to explain this to you really quickly this isn't actually a, a normal method this is called a constructor and that's a special type of method uh, and I'll get more into that later but just know that this is called a constructor all right and so now that we have the constructor made and we have the main method made, we're going to, going to create one more method and you'll recognize this. So type public void paint and then in the parentheses type graphics G. And then in main, the constructor, we're going to uh, make our GUI. So let's do set size with an uppercase S and let's do, let's say, 600 by 600. And then we will do set default close operation. And we can do jframe.exit on close. And then we'll do set location relative to null because we don't have a relative location and then set visible true now I know you're seeing a lot of red here but you this will be fixed very soon so don't worry about that uh, and the reason this red is popping up is because we missed something in this public class main in this public class main we need main to extends j frame and so that means main is pretty much like a method extended off of the jframe method. So just make sure to put in extends jframe like we have in the other tutorials. And now here's where the logic comes in. So in public void paint, let's type while draw amount is less than or equal to uh, 2000, do this. So remember when we created draw amount, which is up here, and so let's put some more stuff in here. Let's do system out println and type generating something like that. And then let's put in int rand x is equal to, uh, we will set a cast to int. And then, so make sure to follow along here. You might get stuck. Um, and that's okay. I'll try to explain this as we're done, so it may seem kind of wonky at first, but you'll understand soon enough, so don't worry. So math.random, because we want a random number, and then times, 
and then in parentheses 1000 minus negative 100 and then plus negative 100 okay so right now you're probably saying what the hell is going on so what we've done here is we've created a random number now traditionally we've used uh, arrays to select random numbers um, but we're not doing that here we're going to use a simplified way or a more uh, you know less a way a way that uses less memory um, and this way is definitely the preferred way to do it as it's smaller although it may look a little bit more confusing so what let me explain what we've done we have made an integer named uh, rand x now it says equals int and that's because we have cast this to an integer because when we generate a random number it actually comes up as a boolean so we need to convert that boolean to an integer and now we've pulled up the math.random class so we are multiplying 100 minus negative 100 plus negative 100 now that may seem ridiculous but just imagine this says pick a number between negative 100 and 1000 now there's actually something I left out instead of 100 make this 1000 so imagine this is saying hey I want you to pick a random number between 100 negative 100 and 1000 and I want you to assign it to rand x now we're gonna do this for rand y also so let's just copy this for the sake of being lazy and change rand x to rand y and now we're going to create an integer size so we're going to generate a random size so let's do int size equals cast to int parentheses math dot random and times 200 minus 100 and then plus 100 and then we're going to generate some random colors now this pretty much works the same way as it does here so let's just copy it and organize a bit and let's change int size to int red and we're going to change these numbers to 255 and then 0 and 0 so um, let me explain one more thing if you notice here all of these numbers are the same 100 100 negative 100 negative 100 negative 100 negative 100 0 0 so always remember if you're picking a random number that this number on the right is also equal to this number on the right now that that's been explained I'm going to explain something else you may be wondering why I chose 255 as the number for red well when you're picking a color between red green blue or RGB you must have the numbers between 255 to 0 you couldn't put in a number like 450 because it just wouldn't work um, the color scale only goes up to 255 as a value so let's put this back down to 255 and the same thing goes for green and blue so let's do this twice and change in red to green and then this one to blue and we should be good now that we've randomly selected an X location a Y location a size and red green blue colors we can actually draw these so let's do color color we're going to create an object here equals new color and the colors will be set to red green let's just organize this red green and blue so what this has done is it has created a color object and this color object is equal to red green and blue so we could actually replace these with like numbers if we wanted to like 10 but since it's randomly generated we're gonna keep our randomly generated variables now let's draw these onto the screen so let's do G so graphics dot set color and set it equal to color which is our color object right here and then we will do G dot fill oval and our rand x location our rand y location our size and our size 
and you, be, and you may be wondering why we have two sizes. Well, that's because we have um, a circle. So this circle could technically, if we wanted to, be longer than it is tall, so it could be like an oval type of shape. But just for this, we'll use the same number so it comes out as a circle each time. So I will also do one last thing. We're going to type draw amount plus plus. And the reason we're doing that is because we want the draw amount variable to add one every time we run this. So it'll only generate 2,000, not like 2 million and keep going. So let me explain this one more time. Just break it down. We have created a random x variable, which picks um, an x location between 1,000 and negative 100. We did the same thing for y. We also found a random size variable, and this will be the size of the circle when it is generated. We also found random red, green, and blue colors, so that we don't have the same color every time we generate a circle. We've also created our color object, saying, hey, we want this color object to be assigned to these colors and we set the color equal to color and we drew an oval at the random x location the random y location and at the sizes and we added one to the draw amount variable so if we run this by pressing the run button you will see that we first have to save and it will pop up now if you look here it has generated our fun little uh well our circles and this actually works many times so say I didn't want it just to generate this I said that one wasn't very cool let's try a different one I could rerun the program and it would generate a different one and I can do this as many times as I want and it'll keep generating different colors each time so that's pretty much the entire program and that's how you run it and um, it's pretty straightforward and I will definitely be posting this code on Pastebin so you can figure it on out and have fun with it. Um, and I really hope you enjoyed this. I hope you got something out of it. And I will talk to you in the next tutorial.